you know, jiu-jitsu has changed a lot in the past 10 years. You know, the world championships moved here. Schools have opened up in almost every city across the nation and worldwide. Uh, there's certainly a lot more emphasis on the sport. And, uh, you know, in, in our shows here, we are, you know, pushing uh, uh, jiu-jitsu hard. And a lot of the things that we have to talk about is, is the tournaments because it's, it's relevant, new information. And uh, like I said at the beginning of today's episode, we don't really talk about the guys that, that aren't competing or aren't creating competitors. And people like yourselves are focused much more on the self-defense side than the competition side. Do you think jiu-jitsu has diverged into two distinct groups nowadays? Um, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, there's a competition side and competition because of the, in my, in my opinion, because of the rules is, has created um, a, a kind of a difference between what I used to, what I, what I was great, raised up on and what is today is a little different, right? So, um, uh, and I think the rules and the way the, the rules were, were developed inside the tournaments has, has really promoted that, you know? And, and I, I don't say that in a bad way. I mean, you, you get what you measure, you, if you, if you are going to create rules, you're going to get what you want. You're going to get out of that, and the people will will take those rules, and they want to win, and they're going to twist those rules to the nth degree so they win. And it's not a bad thing. It's just it's just what it is. I mean, that's what you always do in the tournaments. You take the rules, and you go to the nth degree, and you and you work, and you train hard, and you practice, and you diet to make sure that you win. Right? That's that's the object of of tournaments. So, um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's changed a little bit based on the rules, not in the direction that I would next would would like to see where it go. Um, and I think that's based on the way the rules are. And if you change the rules a little bit, you'll get a little different result, you know. So I think um, um, maybe what you're alluding to is like um, Hickson's um, uh, association, they're kind of talking about um, um, some of the things that are the, the looking at the rules and maybe taking out the uh, advantage points and stuff like that. So, um, and I think the results you're gonna get are, are more toward um, self-defense. Um, I think it'll, it'll help everybody to um, competitors as well. If they compete well and they do their world champion, um, they'll, then when they go to MMA, they have a better chance, if they go to MMA, they have a better chance of doing very well. You see like, um, uh, it's, mm, I wouldn't say embarrassing, but so you go to an MMA fight and you watch a black belt jiu-jitsu and he ends up losing and for an arm lock or for a rear naked choke or something like that. It's like, okay, so not to say those guys aren't really good, I says, but, um, and not that maybe the, the guy he's fighting is the black belt as well, but um, I would think that if we did this with the tournaments, we would have more people who are more prepared for that kind of fighting right out the gate. He's world champion, he goes to MMA, and he's probably gonna do well in MMA. Um, nowadays, I mean, if he's world champion in, in jiu-jitsu, I'm not really so sure, you know? I, I don't know his background, I don't know how much basic he's taken and stuff like that, so I really have no idea. He does really good in tournaments, but, and I, I don't wanna take it away from the world champions, but I just don't know, you know, because of the way the rules are, you know? But actually, the number of people that train jiu-jitsu that actually compete is very small. I would estimate it to be around three to five percent. And the number that goes to MMA is even less than that. So I'm guessing that your goal is not to create world champions or MMA champions. Is that correct? Yeah. I, me, it's, for me, it's just a love of the art. I mean, that's why, uh, as you might know, my, my school is very small. Mm -hmm. We don't advertise. And I'm more than happy to develop my friends and train with my friends. And um, we recently are kind of expanding now because um, we've got better teaching over the years. And I've got a few um, black belts that are interested in teaching. And um, it'd be really interesting to teach. It's kind of fun when you teach like kids and, and women and people who aren't so, even guys who aren't, aren't the the most, most athletic, and you teach them to be better, right? We're not teaching them to be world champions, but if they get better than what they are today, it's perfect, you know? So it's, it's kind of really rewarding. So that's kind of where I'm, kind of where I want to go with that. So what is your goal in teaching? Is it, is it to create self-confidence in people or just to spread the art? Spread the art for sure. And then um, 
Um, I just have a love of teaching. I like teaching. I like the results of teaching people, mm -hmm. the camaraderie, the friendship. It's all fun for me, you mm -hmm. know. So um, I think uh, that's my main driver. Um, I know you're a very humble guy, but I'm going to make you say something good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most common compliment you hear students say after they leave your class? Uh, uh, common. Uh, I've been teaching a long time. But um, some people like the detail that I have. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to give as much detail to the students. Um, I think that comes from what, the way Hickson teaches. I try to take what Hickson teaches and I try to um, make sure I get all the details and make sure I show that the students um, the correct way to do it. And then also also try to put into, show them the effectiveness, effectiveness of this. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, I know if you've taken or watched Hickson teach, I'm sure you have, but he has a way of, he shows the move and then he'll show you how, how effective it is. And he'll let the guy do something and they'll, they'll try to do it and they can't. And so I try to put that into a lot of my teaching. And I think, um, I think a lot of the students appreciate that. Mm -hmm. so. Obviously, Hickson is a very you know, high-level jiu-jitsu practitioner and teacher, um, and you've trained with him for a number of years, but has he ever asked you to demonstrate something and said, yep, that's it, you got it, or is there always a deeper level you can aspire to? Uh, with Hickson? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've actually ex executed moves perfectly, and he said that you got it. Mm -hmm. um, example, I think it was in a... Um, we went around to a few, he used take, to take me around to a lot of different uh, seminars he did. So he was doing a demonstration where he was choking people. So he, he just wanted me to do the choke correctly. So he had me do the choke on him before I taught it to everybody else. So I actually executed it hmm. perfectly. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, see, I, I kind of remember a lot of his moves. So um, occasionally you'll do the move wrong and, um, you'll, and with Hickson, you'll always get in that situation. Right. And he'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's speak about generalizations for a moment. Um, we had an awesome seminar last Sunday, uh, the Jack Topher Charity Benefit. It was awesome teaching alongside you and Henry Akins and Huron and Jack. Um, and all those guys are considered Helio side uh, of the family. Uh, and I'm on the, the Carlos side, being on the Gracie Baja side. Gen speaking of generalizations, how would you s differentiate the Carlos side and the Helio side? Uh. Yeah, I wouldn't be a good one to ask about that. I don't see a lot of the Carlos guys, um, um, so I wouldn't be a really a, a, a good person to let you know that. I, I mostly train with um, the Helio side. Okay. So um, Let me ask you this in a different way. Um, there are many people out there that have never trained at Hickson School or with the Hickson Black Belt. Do you have any idea how your school is unique in comparison to the Jiu-Jitsu as a whole? Do you see other Jiu-Jitsu schools and think like, I do that differently, and how would you explain that? Uh, okay, so what I generally see is when I, my travels, I go to other schools, and occasionally I see students from other other gyms, and I don't know if they're from the Carlos side. I don't know where they come from mm -hmm. sometimes, and sometimes they tell me the name of the teacher they are, and I'm, I'm not really up on names, so sometimes I don't even know who that name is. Mm -hmm. But what I've seen, generally speaking, um, which is part of the discussion I was having about the sport jiu-jitsu, is I see a lot of the students, black belts, brown belts, um, that um, uh, as far as some of the basics, I mean, I'll just, just stick with the basics. They, they really don't know the basics. I mean, um, you get, um, so you, know, you put your arms around somebody's back and you get out of that. And the, um, I have had one black belt, he got out of it, but he, he scrunched down and he curled up in the ball and stuff like that. And, and, so I showed him the basic way how to get out of it. He said, oh, that's so much easier. And I, I'm going, well, it's kind of discouraging. This is for a black belt in, in, in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu to not know some of the basic moves, how to get out, some of the basic things. So I see a lot of deficiencies there. Um, I've seen some schools, um, I don't want to mention names, but I went to another school and um, um, I was just there as a, it was a friend. And um, they had opened up this new school and it was ran by a black belt and uh, a few brown belts. But they really, um, they, they ran the they ran the school for the for the kids class, and they asked me if I wanted to teach. And I said, No, no, I'll, I'll just I'm just here to I'm on vacation, so I'll visit. And 
after watching the class, the, they were teaching um, two years and three year olds barambolos and, and, and sweeps. And, and I, I was going, okay, so these kids must be really advanced, in my opinion, right? So I, she asked me if you want, I still want to show something. So I started, okay, so yeah, I show some basic moves and just the upa move and you hold the, hold the, um, the child's arms down and can you get out of that? And um, so they're getting out of that. And um, so all that stuff, they, they, the kids didn't know. Um, so I said, okay, so it's a student, right? So I talked to the teachers, and the teachers don't know that either. Mm -hmm. I mean, admittedly so. They said, and so do you have a basic program? They said, no, we don't have a basic program. And it's surprising me to hear that from a black belt and a brown belt. I don't have a basic program, so, uh, or basic self-defense program. So, um, uh, so that's some of the differences I see. I see a, a lot more nowadays than I did before. In the olden days, you didn't see that so much. Um, but nowadays, I, I'm, it's, it's getting watered down and diluted a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm seeing some of that. You know, when I look at, at the big arguments in, in the jiu-jitsu world, uh, there's, there's some people that see things one way, some people that see things the other way. To me, it comes down to whether you think BJJ is a martial art or if it's a sport. <laughs> and there are things like... Um, uh, you know, tournaments. It doesn't really exist so much in a martial art. Martial arts for fighting, uh, whereas a sport is, is doesn't have to do anything with, with with fighting. And I wonder, is it is it okay for the guys out there that live in a very peaceful country, whether it's America or Japan or where else, where they want a form of exercise, they want some friendship, and they're not interested in self defense. Is that okay to practice BJJ as a sport? Is it okay? Yeah, of course, it's okay. I mean, if, if that's what you want, um, I, I would say, I guess in my opinion, it's kind of, uh, in my opinion, is, is a disservice to them. Um, being as knowing, knowing how effective as, as Gracie Jiu Jitsu is, for you to practice it as a sport and not learn all the basic self defense. I think is a disservice to the people who are learning it. For a guy to get a black belt and, and not know the basics and not be able to defend himself. Um, and, I mean, I'm kind of exaggerating because if you train sport jiu-jitsu, you're pretty good at fighting, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and I'm not taking away from the guys who, who sport jiu-jitsu, but the basics and stuff like that, I think, adds another a whole level to that. Some of the basic stuff where you get in situations, you can defend yourself even better and more effectively. And, and you, you see that when, when some of those people don't have those capabilities and they go to MMA. So I think to, to, uh, to say, is it okay for them to practice sport jiu-jitsu, of course, yeah. They can, they can do whatever they want. If you're gonna ask my opinion what they should do, I says, no, don't do that. Just, you can practice sport jiu-jitsu if you want, but make sure you understand the basics, make sure you practice basics, make sure, make sure you know both. Um, because um, I think, for their own growth, for who they who they are, and for them earning a black belt, it's it's um, it would be better, I think. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, so let's move on to the technique portion of the class. What are you going to show today? I'll just show what we kind of went over the other day. Okay. Uh, headlocks. I think that's uh, headlocks are kind of like um, uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people do it wrong, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people don't know even black belts. Um, um, I don't know if you saw in some of the class, there's a lot of people are, are, are lacking that, some of the little fine details and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I'll just show awesome. that. Before we get to that, where can people find out more information about you online? Uh, Kamojujitsu.com. Mm -hmm. And any Facebook or so, uh, Instagram or anything I'm like not that? I'm a Facebook guy. So <laughs> Let's go to the website yeah, then, Kamojujitsu.com. Yeah. All right, guys, come right back for some techniques from Dave Kama. Hey guys, welcome back to This Week in BJJ. Today my guest is Dave Kama. Thanks again for coming on the show, Dave. And uh, we did a seminar last weekend, and Dave, you taught headlock uh, escapes and defenses. And I thought that was an interesting topic because it's not something that you see too often. Um, you know, skilled jiu-jitsu players usually don't go for headlock positions because it's um, not always the safest, but you were saying that it's very common in like a street fight scenario. Right, exactly. Yeah, so it happens a lot. I mean, you know, with your uncles, with your with your brother, I mean, I mean, I don't know. There's not too many people that I, that I don't know that didn't get in, in a headlock when they're younger, or you know, they get in a street fight and somehow some guy grabbed his head because that was the only thing he had, and he would hold on to his head for dear life and hang on there, you know. So, 
uh, I think it's important that everybody knows how to get out of headlocks, you know, the correct way. And uh, so some of the stuff I want to show you is like uh, how to get out of the headlock. And once you know these, um, the start to the basics, um, I think there's like three headlocks will get you out as long as you keep your elbow tucked. And I'll, I'll kind of show you that a little bit. Okay, so, cool. So basically, if you if you lie down real quick, um, yeah, that's good. So basically, when you're when you're when you're down on the ground, um, the guy's gonna go for a headlock, right? So um, basic first thing you want to do is you want to turn sideways like you're doing. This is perfect. Most people they lie. Uh, some people they lie down flat like this. So if I grab like this, you can you can actually hurt your neck. I can hurt your neck really bad. Mm -hmm. So you want to kind of avoid that. So right away you turn sideways. Right, you turn sideways. The next thing you want to do is you want to pull this elbow down on the floor and keep it on the floor. The reason for that is is there's another move, Kesukatami which is very, very difficult to get out. So, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother um, class or course. When I go through. So I just want to go over the basics, keeping your elbow down. So when you first turn sideways, you can take sideways. When I squeeze your head, you, you're, you're pretty safe. You won't hurt your neck. You keep your elbow down. Um, so let's talk about the elbow. You got to keep the elbow down. So to, to keep your elbow down, you want to put weight on it. And that's typically how it's taught in most cases is to keep your elbow down. So if you try to put weight on your elbow, right? Okay, so it's hard for me to pull up, and that's generally how it's taught, right? But if I hold your elbow, or if I hold the elbow down here, and I push on your body, the elbow comes up, and I slip my knee underneath, and then I got case katami again. So basically what you wanna do is, so you put more weight on it, it's okay to put more weight on it. So you, and that's, that's what, typically what I've seen. And then you put more weight on it, and I push him back, and then I'm underneath his elbow again. So. What you need to do is, sit right there, put your foot back, put your foot back here, and then you drive with this top shoulder forward, and you move your bottom shoulder out a little bit, right? So you, wanna, you don't want to get pushed back, you want to drive with that top shoulder. So if I push you, say if you pick your leg up real quick, I push you back, you fall backwards like this. So what you do is you put your foot back, line it up with your top shoulder, and off your leg, you drive to your top shoulder, and you keep pushing, so don't let me push you back. Okay, so it's a little bit hard for you, so move your shoulder back a little bit more, right? Keep forward, move your leg back a little bit more. Right, so yes. So now, if I put on my weight, you can keep it there, right? So even now, if I try to pick your elbow up, grab hold of your head, keep your shoulder forward. Now if I try to pick your elbow up, it's not gonna happen. As long as you keep that shoulder on my back, I can't pick your elbow up, right? Don't let me push you back. You use your back foot here. Right. Push more. So if you push with your top shoulder more and I can't pick your elbow, then you're good to go. So you keep it. So the, the shoulder connection with your shoulder on my on my back yeah. is really important. Even if even if you get even if you get the case of Tommy, using that top shoulder is very important for you. Okay. So with that top shoulder, with my head up, you make a frame across my neck, right? And put your hand on. Right? And typically what people do is they'll reach up. Put your arm on here, and they'll reach up and put your hand on here, and then there's the elbow, and then I got the kiss katami again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you want to do is stay sideways, put your hand, frame, right. So his elbow's still low, he's still driving the top shoulder, and he, still, he has everything. So now, if I put weight on, you have it. Okay. So now I have a frame here. So now, with a simple move, your move your hip back a little bit. Push my head back. Grab me with your leg. Scissor around my neck and squeeze. Put it up. So my shoulders are not parallel to each other. The top one is forward. Is that correct? Yeah, it's better. I mean, if you create it like it's kind of like um, if you create like a, an angle, mm -hmm. right, with your shoulder. If I'm straight up and down, I push. It's hard to hold that angle. If you're more of an angle, it's it's harder for me to. To push that over, right? Kind of like a triangle, you know. Yeah. The, the the taller the triangle is, the, the easier to push it over. But the the wider the triangle is, the um, the harder to push it over. So probably the reason why you see a lot of triangle emblems on jujitsu. Okay. So that's kind of um, the uh, the move I want to show you. So okay. so, there second. so so frame the top shoulder. Good. Okay. So I want to show you one more move, and then. Uh, because there's another issue I want to show. So 
push your top shoulder more. Yes, yeah, right. So if you try to put the frame up in front of my face and put my head down, mm -hmm. you can't you can't put your hand in there right now. Right. Okay. So you can't do the same frame as you did before. So now I have my leg up here. You hook my leg, right? And then you just drive that top shoulder in my back. Yes. Right. And I usually let go. Mm -hmm. Right. I do one of two things. Either I'll let go or I'll roll with you. Okay. Trap. Hook my leg. Yeah, top shoulder. Drive that top shoulder in my back. Right. Or I'll just hang on. All you do is go to the side. Mm -hmm. Put one foot where my hip is. Right. I'm still hanging on. And then you want to frame across my neck. Right. And then you put. You want to put your. You want to put your arm closer to the elbow than, than to your hands. Your hands, you're going to frame off this. Your hands are kind of weak. Mm -hmm. Closer to your elbow is a stronger hold. Mm -hmm. Okay? So from here, you're just going to lift it up. You're going to take the slack out. No, not your butt. Just your head. Yes. So you just take the slack out. Yes. And then you put weight on your arms. And you start rolling in. Hang on a second. So what, the direction you want to go is down the line of my body. And you go a little bit, a little bit this way. So down the line of my body and a little bit off. Okay. Okay. So take a slack out, and all you do is not pushing, but just move in that direction. Yes. Arms come open. Hands on the floor. Take, grab my arm, step over, and arm lock. All right. Okay. So, common thing, common. Thing I see on that move, here, I'll let you hold on my neck now. Lay down sideways. Common thing I, I see is this: when people go here, the guy is really nice, and he'll just let go of his arm. The guy says, "Yeah, I can get out every single time." Um, for teachers and for people who want to practice, you hold on as tight as you can. Don't let go. So if I do it wrong, he's not going to let go, right? So. Here, get my arm in the right place. I frame, take the slack out. Then I need to go in the right direction until he lets go. My hands around and go for the arm lock. Okay, so so that's those two moves: the shoulder in the back and the breaking of the the arm. There's two things where I see where a lot of people have a lot of a lot of issues. So that's kind of what I was showing in the in the in the seminar. Cool, yeah. And I think I asked this question during the seminar, but talking about headlocks is not just a self-defense topic. The Kesegatame position is a valid move in Jiu-Jitsu as well. It's one that guys don't get a lot of training with. Um, it's kind of thought of it more as a Judo position than a, a Jiu-Jitsu position. And why do you think that is? Uh, hmm, I'm not really sure on that. I mean, think there's less attacks from Kesegatame than there is from side control? Well, when you, when, uh, what I see is like jujitsu, when you fight jujitsu, there's not a whole lot of jujitsu guys who go for headlocks, mm -hmm. as you kind of pointed out, right? So you don't see that a whole lot, except for the guys who maybe come from judo or maybe for catch wrestling, and they know the effectiveness of it. They're very good at it, and um, so they'll try it. But the problem with, like, if you go kiss Katami and he gets out, I mean, say you just pull your head out. No, no, hey, you pull your head out, he's on my back. Right. It's not good for jujitsu. Uh, you know, if you if you if you lift me up and roll me, yeah, I'm here on the bottom. It's not good for jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, there's a few things that are risky if you go for those for those moves. But um, as you can see, see some of the some of the guys are you know with Huron's fight. I mean, catch wrestling does work, and the catch Katami is well and alive. Yeah, and actually, I like using it a lot. It comes in handy. I play with it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and Josh Barnett showed it also against Dean Lister, right. as well. So it's a very effective position, and it's fun to uh, catch jiu-jitsu guys off guard because they're not used to defending it too much. Right. Exactly. Excellent. Well, Dave, thank you so much for sharing your techniques today. And one more time, where can people find you online? Uh, www.comejujitsu.com. Okay. Thank you guys for watching the show. We'll be back next week with another edition of This Week in BJJ. 
Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the interview and techniques by Dave Kama. You know, we try to get a wide range of uh, guys on the show um, from all different uh, walks of life, and we have a lot of other episodes planned in the future. But to give us a little more motivation to keep this show going, please give us a like, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, anything you can do. I know me and the crew really appreciates the feedback. So that being said, we'll see you guys next time on This Week in BJJ.